In this video, I'm gonna share five Excel techniques that I wish I'd known sooner when I started using Excel. These are tips that will save you a ton of time with your everyday Excel tasks and help you prevent embarrassing mistakes. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. My name's John and our mission here at Excel Campus is to help you improve your Excel skills so you can save time with your job and advance in your career. So let's get to it. Okay, so we're first gonna look at a tip that will save you a lot of time when writing formulas. Here we need to calculate the average of the amount column. So I'm just gonna type equals average, we'll tab into that. And of course here, all we need to do is select all these numbers. Now, if we're doing this with the mouse and we start scrolling down here, or basically dragging down, this particular data set has 10,000 uh, rows. So this will take a long time. In fact, I calculated this and the fastest that I could get down to the bottom was 26 seconds. It takes me 26 seconds to essentially select 10,000 rows. So instead of doing that, and I'm getting close there to the bottom as you can see, instead of doing that, what we can do instead is I'll show you some keyboard shortcuts. So we're gonna again here go equals average, tab into that. And we can select the first cell. Of course, you can hit down arrow here to get here, or we can just select it with the mouse. And then we're gonna use the keyboard shortcut Control Shift Down Arrow. And that's gonna select all the way to the bottom. You can see all 10,000 rows are selected. And I'll just hit Enter to input uh, the formula. We can see the results right there. Now, one common challenge with this is if your data has blank cells. Like in this example here, we have some blank cells. So here again, we're gonna do equals average. And if we use control shift down arrow now, that's just gonna select it down to the next non-blank or the last non-blank cell before a blank. And so here we'd have to hit control shift down arrow a bunch of times to get all the way down to the bottom. So one other thing we can do here is instead use control shift end. Control shift end on the keyboard will get us all the way down to the bottom as well. And then again, we'll hit enter to input the formula. Now control shift end will also select out to the right. So if we're gonna do the same formula here, just select this cell, control shift end is gonna select all the way to the right, however much used data or used cells you have out to the right. So at this point here, we have two columns selected. We obviously don't want that. Here what I can do is hold shift and press left arrow and that will bring it back. And if I have to go back maybe three rows or something like that, or I'm sorry, three columns, just hold shift and continue to uh, hit left arrow. And that'll get you back to just one column selected. And I just want to jump in here and quickly say that as you're watching this, if you feel like you already know all of these techniques, then this will be a good reminder to teach them to your coworkers. That's as long as you like receiving high fives and pats on the back. And then if your data is in an Excel table, like this data is here, we uh, can use a keyboard shortcut here. I'm just gonna select the first cell and the keyboard shortcut is control space. And that's going to select the entire column. So very simple shortcut. If you'd prefer to use the mouse, you can also do that with the mouse. I'm gonna, again, uh, just select here, or I'm sorry, input the function. And then I'm gonna hover my mouse and over the top half of the header uh, row here of the column until it turns into that down arrow. It's very hard to do, it's only three pixels tall, this kind of this drop zone here. But if you can get it to turn into a down arrow, then just click, that's gonna again select all the data in the table column. This is called the data body range of the table. For this next challenge, we need to find matching values. So in this example, we have some order data over here. And then on the right, we have our customer data table. And we need to look up the phone number in the customer data table here for each of these customers, each of these order rows. Now, when I first started using Excel, the way I kind of would approach this is just hit Control F on the keyboard to open the find window. And of course, we want to find this value here. So you can hit Control C to copy it. We can paste it in here. Then we can select this column that contains all of the customer IDs and hit find next. We'll find it way down here. Here's our uh, phone number. I'm gonna hit control C to paste that. Then I'm gonna go back up to the top over here and uh, I'm sorry, copy, control Z to copy, control V to paste it right there. Now, of course, this is gonna take a lot of time because I have 10,000 rows of data. And this is where lookup formulas come in so handy. And it's pretty much a magical feature of Excel where we can write a formula to do all of this work for us. Now, there's a lot of different lookup formulas. We're gonna use XLOOKUP for this, which is kind of the newest and latest and greatest lookup formula. So I'm gonna start typing equals XLOOKUP. We'll tab into that. Our lookup value, this is gonna be the customer ID that we wanna look up. So I'm gonna select that cell, comma. Our lookup array is the range that we're going to look into. And in this case here, it's gonna be the customer IDs. So I'm gonna select this first cell, hit control shift down arrow to go all the way to the bottom there. I'm gonna hit F4 on the keyboard to make that an absolute reference. So as I copy the formula down here, this reference to these cells does not change, comma. 
our return array is gonna be the results that we wanna return. And in this case here, it's the phone number. So I'm gonna select the phone number column here, same exact thing, Control Shift down arrow, F4 on the keyboard to make that an absolute reference, adding those dollar symbols there. And this is all we need for XLOOKUP. There are additional arguments, as you can see here, these are all optional arguments. And this is really all we need for XLOOKUP. So we'll hit enter. So you can see that instantly returns the phone number, which is awesome. But where the power of Excel really comes in is if you hover over the bottom right corner here, this is called the fill handle of the cell and then double click. That's going to copy all of these formulas down. And as you can see, we instantly get the results. If we jump all the way down to the bottom, instantly get the results and all of those lookups for 10,000 rows of data. So lookup formulas are amazing. They will save you a ton of time. And I'll put some links to some additional resources in the description below to learn more about VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP, and the other formulas. For this next challenge, we're gonna look at combining or consolidating files. So in this example here, I have these instructions where I need to follow these steps every single day to open up this new uh, export of leads and copy and paste the data to the bottom of this table over here. So we'll just take a look at that and I'll show some tips to do this kind of manually in Excel, but of course we can speed this process up, which I'm gonna show in just a minute. So first of all, we're gonna say don't convert here on our CSV file. Here's our CSV file here. We need to remove some of this address info here. So I'm gonna select those columns, right click, delete, or you can use control minus on the keyboard. And then I'm just gonna select all this data. I'm gonna hit control shift end, shift left arrow over, hit control C to copy that. Then I'm gonna jump back over to my other file here, control down arrow to go all the way to the bottom, hit down arrow again, and then control V to paste. And I'd have to repeat that every single day. And of course that can get boring and tedious and you might start making errors in this process. So let's take a look at a way to clean this up and make it a lot faster. And we can do that with a tool called Power Query. Now, if you haven't heard of Power Query before, that's absolutely okay. I'm gonna give you a really quick crash course on it. So we're gonna go to the data tab of the ribbon here and over in the get and transform data section, this is all the Power Query buttons. We're gonna go to get data, from file, and we're gonna choose from folder. And that's going to prompt us to select the folder where our leads, or where our files are stored. So our leads files are all in this folder here. They're all CSV files. We'll go ahead and hit open. And that's gonna show us this preview of the contents of the folder. You can see all the CSV files here. Down here, I'm gonna choose combine and transform data. And that's gonna open up this preview window of one of our CSV files. We don't need to make any changes here, so we'll just hit okay. And then that opens up the Power Query Editor. Now this is a window that opens up on top of Excel, and there's a lot of buttons here to do different types of transformations. We're not gonna get into all of those right now, but essentially I'm gonna do those same steps, which is first just select these address columns. I'm gonna select this one, hold shift, select this one here, right click, remove those columns, or you can use the delete key on the keyboard. Now this is not deleting the data from the CSV files, it's just deleting it in memory here in the query. And that's all the transformations we need to do now. Of course, you could do a lot of other transformations here if you need to sort this data, or maybe filter out some rows or things like that. There's a lot of buttons you can see up here to do different types of transformations. But I'm just gonna go to the Home tab, Close and Load, and then that's going to output all of the results right here. And as you can see, all of the data has been combined. Power Query did that when we chose that uh, combine and transform step. So all of the CSV files are stacked on top of each other here, and we have all of the data ready to go. And what makes this extra magical is when we come back the next day, let's say we get new data and we download it, it's here in our downloads folder. All we need to do is take this data or the CSV file, drag it into our leads folder. So now we have data for day five here. We'll jump back over to Excel and here in this table, we're gonna right click, refresh, keyboard shortcut is Alt F5. That's going to rerun the query, do all those transformations, delete the columns and everything like that and add our data to the bottom. We can now see that we have data for day five here. If I hit control down arrow to go all the way to the bottom, we have our day five data added right to the bottom. So we no longer have to do all of those manual steps. Of course, in this example, it's very simple. I only had one uh, transformation to delete some columns. But of course, realistically, you probably have several, if not dozens of transformations you have to do to clean up your data. Power Query can help you with all of those and then fully automate the process so you never have to do those again. It's an amazing feature of Excel and I have additional videos on it. And again, I'll link those in the description below. 
Next, we'll take a look at a way to save time when creating summary reports in Excel. So in this example here, we have our leads data that we looked at in a previous example. And now the boss wants a report to know how many leads we're generating every day. And so for this, we're kind of going to do this the manual way and write some formulas against it. Of course, we'd need to know uh, or get a list of all of the unique values from the date column here. There's a lot of different ways to do that in Excel. If you're on an older version of Excel, you might just select all the data here. Let's just put our report over here. I'm going to hit Control V to paste. And then I'm going to go up to the Data tab here and choose Remove Duplicates. And that will remove all of our duplicates. Of course, I forgot the header row there, so we want to delete one off of there. I'm already making mistakes. And here we could do a count if type formula. And of course, our range will be this column over here, comma. And then our criteria will be this cell right here. We'll hit Enter, and you can see that we get 418, and then uh, double uh, click to fill that down, and we get all of our results. Now, this report's not very flexible. What happens when we add another day, right? There's things we could do to make it a little more flexible by using the unique function here, the new unique function. If you are on a version of Excel that has that, you could use the unique function instead to return this list of unique results, but still it's going to require quite a bit of work. So one way that we can make this a lot faster is by using a pivot table. Again, kind of an advanced feature, or sometimes thought of as an advanced feature of an Excel, but it can actually make our lives really easy. So I'm going to uh, click any cell inside the table here, go to the Insert tab, and we're just going to choose Pivot Table. That's going to ask us where we want to put it. We'll put this on a new sheet. And this is essentially our summary report. And to build out this report, over here on the right side, we have the Pivot Table Fields list. This is a list of all of the columns in our data set here. And all we need to do is take the date field and we're going to drag that into the rows area. And you can see that's automatically going to give us this list of unique values from that column. And then for this, we can just take the name field or any of the other fields and drag it into the values area. And that's automatically going to give us a count. It's going to do that calculation for us to give us a count of the number of rows for each of those dates. And so this is very flexible. And with pivot tables, it's all drag and drop. If I wanted the dates across the top, I can move it up here to the columns area. And now I have my dates across the top instead. And a lot of different things here we can do to quickly create summary reports without having to write any formulas. I have a popular video on how to create pivot tables and dashboards, and I'll link that in the description below. And finally, we're going to take a look at another way to automate common Excel tasks. So if you've seen any of my other videos before, or even throughout this video, you might have noticed that I always have this uh, top row here that contains the title for the sheet, and it always looks the same. Now to format this, these are the steps that I'd have to go through to kind of manually set this up. And of course, I don't do that. I automate this, so I just have to click a button to create all of this for me and to create this nice looking header row on each sheet. And for this, Excel has a great feature called Macros. And essentially, this is a coding language that's built into all Office applications that allows us to write code to automate processes. But the good news is, is you don't even have to know how to write code. You can just record your steps here in Excel and then run the macro to do all that work for you. So we're going to take a look at how to do this. I'm going to go over to this uh, blank sheet right here where I'm going to uh, record the macro. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn on the macro recorder. Down here in the bottom left corner of the status bar, we can click this button. That'll open up the uh, macro recorder. And we can give this uh, macro a name. I'm just going to call it sheet title for now. No spaces in the name. You can assign a shortcut key to it. We're going to store it in the personal macro workbook from this drop down list. Just choose personal macro workbook. You can give it a description if you want, and then go ahead and hit OK. And you'll notice this button now turns into what is a stop symbol. So we can click this to stop recording the macro, but currently the macro is recording all of our steps. And the first thing we want to do here is we're just going to select the first row, and I'm going to insert a row here. And that just inserts a row above any existing row so I don't override any data. I'm going to change the row height here to 30, fill this with a light gray color. I'm also going to add uh, borders here. We can right click Format Cells or Control 1, and then we'll just choose whatever color we'd like. I like this nice bright green color. Bottom border, hit OK, and then we'll change the font size to uh, 16, bold it, and then I also like to uh, adjust column A's width to about a uh, 3 
points wide. Once I've done all of those formatting steps, I'm gonna hit the stop button here and that's gonna stop recording. Now to see this, we can go up to the developer tab and click the visual basic button. Keyboard shortcut is Alt F11. If you don't see the developer tab, I have a separate video that explains how to enable it and I'll link that in the description below. Or you can just hit Alt F11 on the keyboard and that's gonna open up this window here. And over here on the left side, we'll find our personal macro workbook. It's named personal.xls x or i'm sorry xls b and then we can go right here into the module you probably only see one module down here but essentially we're going to expand into the modules find the module double click that and here's all of the code that the macro recorder just recorded now you can uh, read through this and a lot of it just kind of is self-explanatory here in terms of the borders that we added we changed our row height to 30 and things like that but you don't have to know all of this code it, of course it's good to learn and i have additional resources that will help you learn vba that's the name of this coding language but you don't necessarily have to learn it all in order to run this macro what we can do is just close this window down. Now let's say we add a new sheet to our workbook here. So we're gonna have a new blank sheet. I'm going to go up to the View tab, or you can go to the Developer tab, but I'll go to the View tab here and click the Macros button. And then here's a list of all of our macros. Now I have a lot of them because I have a lot of macros in my personal macro workbook. So I'm just gonna scroll down to find the one we just created, which is again called Sheet Title right here. Select that, and then I'll just click the Run button. And that will run that instantly and now you can see that I have my sheet title uh, right here and of course I can type a title up here it's bold 16 point font and everything's ready to go and you can also add a custom ribbon tab like I have one here called my macros where I've added all of these macros from my personal macro workbook including the sheet title macro so now when I open up any workbook or add a sheet to the workbook I can just go right here, my macros, sheet title, that'll run that macro there, and I can do that all with the click of a button. And as you can see, I have a lot of different macros here to do very common everyday Excel tasks. I do have a separate video that explains the personal macro workbook and setting up these custom ribbon tabs in a lot more detail. And again, I'll link that in the description below. So I'm curious to know which of these videos was your favorite or which one you'll be using the most. Leave a comment below and let us know. And there are links to additional videos that go deeper on each of these topics in the description below as well. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.